Did you know that your brain can understand images that you've seen for just 13 milliseconds? The image projected onto the back of your eyes is actually inverted. The brain then flips it back for correct perception. Humans can see 100 degrees vertically and 190 degrees horizontally and can distinguish about a million colors. By the way, what are the most active muscles in our body? That's right, the muscles that control the eyes. Moreover, our vision is so sensitive that it can detect a light beam consisting of just five to seven photons. Yet even more astonishing visual abilities occur in nature. Here, we're talking about animals, particularly insects that surround us. Their vision differs from ours because they have different evolutionary tasks and living conditions. In today's video, we'll delve into this fascinating topic, and you'll learn which animal can see 350 times better in the dark than humans, and which one can detect ultraviolet light. How do animals see this world? By the way, don't forget to hit like and subscribe as this would show the YouTube algorithm that this video is worth watching. Shall we get started? First, let's find out how scientists learn about animal vision. For humans with our type of vision, it can be hard to imagine what it's like to see differently. The retina contains two types of receptors, rods and cones. Rods distinguish light and dark, while cones differentiate color. Just looking at rods and cones under a microscope can tell you whether an animal sees color. Brain scans can also reveal whether an animal reacts to colors. We can also determine if certain parts of the brain are activated by color changes. Of course, we can't say exactly how animals see. Our knowledge is based on various studies, and such diversity can sometimes be hard to grasp. For instance, we don't truly know what it's like to see ultraviolet rays, which help deer find lichen. Nor do we understand how mosquitoes see infrared radiation which allows them to detect the most blood-rich areas. Remember, animals primarily need the vision to find food or to avoid becoming someone else's food. For example, insects have what is known as compound eyes, which consist of special cone-shaped elements called omatidia. Each one perceives only a tiny piece of the object in front of the eyes, creating a mosaic image of the object. For example, honeybees have thousands of these elements in their eyes. Imagine how differently we would experience the world if we could see as animals or insects do. But first, let's explore how mammals, the closest to us, perceive the world. Let's start with dogs. You probably think that they see the world in black and white, right? Well, this is a misconception. Human eyes have three types of cones determining color. This allows us to distinguish light of three different wavelengths. Our brain perceives these wavelengths as blue, red, and green. Like most mammals, dogs have two types of cones. This allows them to distinguish blue from yellow, but not red from green. Therefore, their vision is similar to that of humans with red-green color blindness, who also lack the third type of cone. By drawing parallels with such human vision, we can guess how dogs see, which is something like this. Take a look. To see blue and yellow colors, both dogs and humans rely on neurons inside the retina. They get excited in response to a beam of yellow light hitting the cone but their activity is suppressed when exposed to blue light. As a result, dogs discern blue and yellow. However, red and green light act neutrally on the neurons in dogs. That means no signal is sent from these colors, and the brain doesn't perceive them. As a result, where you might see a red or green tomato, dogs likely perceive it in black and white. How then can they distinguish red from green? T. 
Typically, red objects appear darker than green ones, so a dark red apple will most likely be red. Interestingly, some data suggests dogs may see more shades of blue than we do and are better adapted to twilight, although they get a blurrier image. And finally, they are much better at detecting movement so that prey wouldn't escape them. The misconception that dogs see everything upside down arises from the fact that the image on their retina is indeed inverted. But this is also true for humans. However, our brains correctly orient these images. For example, a dog lowers its head to drink, not raises it. So the only creatures that see upside down for lack of flying dogs might be flying foxes. Now let's look at the world through the feline eyes. Like dogs, they are crepuscular creatures, meaning they are active at dawn and dusk, which influences their vision. Cats possess six to eight times more cells for detecting objects in low light compared to humans, enabling them to see much more in what we perceive as darkness. They also have better peripheral vision and the ability to detect movement in the dark. Their field of vision spans 200 degrees, surpassing the 180 to 190 degrees typical in humans. So they see things this way. But cats don't surpass us in every aspect. Daylight, for instance, isn't their prime time. Humans have a greater number of cones for color perception, allowing us to discern a wide array of colors like red, yellow, orange, and brown. Whereas for cats, these colors look very similar. It's not precisely known which colors cats see. Some believe they primarily see blue or gray, while others suggest blue and yellow with hints of green. Regardless, their color perception generally falls short of human vision. Moreover, they see much worse up close. Whereas humans can clearly distinguish objects at 14 centimeters, 5.5 inches, cats require a distance of 25 centimeters, 10 inches. Their long distance vision also isn't as sharp. You can easily spot a soccer ball at 30 meters, 100 feet. But for a cat, it needs to be within six meters, 20 feet. Thus, this furry friend will never enjoy a city panorama because they see blurrier at a distance. Let's move on to larger animals. What comes to mind when you think about an aversion to red rags? Bulls in a bullfight? However, that's another misconception. Actually, bulls don't distinguish the color red. Instead, they perceive shades of violet, gray, black, or various browns. Bullfighting, a traditional spectacle in Spain and other countries, involves a matador teasing the bull with a muleta, a crimson cloth on a stick. This has led to the widespread belief that bulls dislike red. Imagine, however, being in the bull's place at that moment, surrounded by thousands of screaming and noisy people. It's irritating and confusing. The waving cloth triggers an adrenaline rush and a fight or flight response in the bull. Thus, it's the sudden movement, not the color, that triggers the animal. Overall, bulls have excellent vision and a vast field of view. But unlike you, they see only a limited range of colors, generally in muted tones. Do you recall the two types of cones in dogs? Bulls have a similar setup. They distinguish parts of the spectrum from blue to violet and from yellow to green but they don't see all shades of yellow and blue. Let's see through their eyes. What bulls really dislike are sharp contrasts of light and darkness. For example, a dark fence around a white building can make them nervous, just like shadows on objects, which they perceive as pits. For the same reason, bulls don't like to drink water with bright sun reflections, preferring moderately lit environments. They also poorly perceive distance to objects, leading them to occasionally charge towards a fence without realizing how close it is. 
Now, let's examine horses, animals with a nearly 350 degree field of vision. This is due to the placement of their eyes on the sides of their heads, which are much more mobile than those of birds. Therefore, horses don't need to turn their heads as much as birds to look forward. Horse vision differs from human vision in sharpness, distance, and the detection of peripheral movement. Approximately 23% of horses are nearsighted, needing to approach an object to see its details clearly. Conversely, 43% are farsighted. Details start to become clearer for them as they move away from the object. It often seems that horses have excellent vision. For example, a horse might raise its head, direct its ears, flare its nostrils, and widen its eyes at the sight of a distant bird flapping its wings. This is how the horse sharpens its view, stationary detail perception, and sense of smell. When we talk about vision, it's not always about size. Horse eyes are eight times larger than human eyes and the largest among terrestrial mammals. However, their visual acuity is significantly worse than ours when it comes to distinguishing fine details. For example, you might notice details from a distance of 9 meters, 30 feet. But a horse requires at most 6 meters, 20 feet for the same clarity. In other words, they need to get up to 50% closer to see the same thing as you. This is how a horse sees. The peak of horses' visual acuity is around the age of seven and tends to decline as they get older. Their remarkable peripheral vision serves a vital purpose, to spot predators in time and escape from them in a millisecond. These fascinating creatures are known as tarsiers. Measuring just 8 to 16 centimeters, 3 to 6 inches, they are small enough to fit in your hand. Their diet consists of insects, small vertebrates, and bird eggs. They are also the only known primates that communicate using ultrasound. As you've noticed, tarsiers' eyes are quite large compared to their bodies. Each is about the size of this predator's brain. Interestingly, tarsiers cannot move their eyeballs. If they want to look right or left, they need to turn their heads. Despite this limitation, their eye structure indicates that vision is crucial for them. Tarsiers are capable of seeing and catching insects and small birds, even in pitch darkness. This capability stems from the abundance of rods which distinguish light from darkness in the back of their eyes unlike cones, which discern color. As a result, their eyes function like night vision goggles in the animal kingdom. Here they are. Researchers from Dartmouth claim that the last common ancestor of the currently living tarsiers possessed very sharp trichromatic vision, similar to that of modern marmosets and apes. This typically implies a diurnal lifestyle. However, tarsiers are primarily nocturnal, Scientists believe early tarsiers were adapted to low-light conditions, such as twilight or bright moonlight. Such conditions were dark enough for the development of large eyes, but still not bright enough to maintain trichromatic color vision. Have you heard the expression, blind as a bat? Actually, it's misleading, because bats are far from being blind. Perhaps the expression arose due to their fast and erratic flight pattern. The visual acuity of bats varies from one species to another. Larger species, megabats, have big eyes and rely on vision during flight and foraging. Most smaller species, or microbats, use echolocation for these purposes, although they typically have smaller eyes. Nevertheless, they still rely on vision for daily activities and detecting objects beyond the effective range of echolocation, which is about 10 to 20 meters, 33 to 66 feet. They need echolocation to find fruits, insects, and small animals. Their vision is even sharper than that of most humans. But unlike humans, they lead a nocturnal lifestyle and have excellent hearing. Bats mostly hunt late at night. 
Some species can even perceive colors thanks to two light-sensitive proteins in the back of their eyes. S-opsin, which detects blue and ultraviolet light, and L-opsin, which detects red and green light. However, many species lack one of these proteins, resulting in complete color blindness. Certain bats from Central and South America have independently lost their ability to see blue and ultraviolet light, consequently losing their color vision. Thus, the expression, sees like a bat, actually means that a person has excellent vision. Since we're talking about flying creatures, let's imagine what it's like to see the world from a bird's eye view. And it's worth starting with those whose vision is so acute that they can discern details in an area of 13 square kilometers, five square miles. You've guessed it, these are eagles. Not only do they observe what happens on the left and right, but also notice when someone approaches them from behind. These birds see four to eight times better than the average human. Although an eagle might weigh about 4.5 kilograms, 10 pounds, their eyes are roughly the same size as those of humans. What we see clearly at a distance of 1.5 meters, five feet, is equally clear to an eagle from six meters, 20 feet. So they see things this way. To fully understand an eagle's vision, consider this. The human retina has a pit with 200,000 cones per millimeter, where an eagle's retina has two pits, each containing one million cones per millimeter. What advantages does this give? For instance, if you were an eagle, you could spot a rabbit from a distance of 3.2 kilometers, two miles. While diving for an attack, an eagle's vision remains sharp and clear throughout the approach. Moreover, eagle's eyes are positioned on either side of their heads, offering nearly a panoramic view. Their field of vision is 340 degrees, and they turn their heads every five seconds. But that's not all they perceive ultraviolet light too. These birds can track a tiny vole from the sky by the ultraviolet rays reflected from the animal's waist. Cool, right? Eagles rule during the day, but once the sun sets, nocturnal predators like owls take over at night. Just like in humans, their piercing eyes are located at the front of their heads. When the fields of vision from both eyes overlap, it results in three-dimensional or binocular vision, a feature shared with humans and many predatory animals. This enables them to accurately measure distance and precisely time their attacks. In fact, owls have the most forward-facing eyes among all bird groups. Unlike us, they have an additional optical advantage, nictitating membranes. These semi-transparent third eyelids protect the eyes from debris when the owl swoops in for an attack. Owl's eyes are exceptionally large, so they capture enough light to see even after sunset. They make up to 5% of the total body mass of these birds. To put this into perspective, your eyes make up about 0.0003% of your total weight. Their pupils can dilate significantly, maximizing light absorption on the light-sensitive retina at the back of the eye. The human retina has 20 rods for every cone, whereas owls have a ratio of more than 30 rods for every cone. That's why they are so good at detecting movement in the dark. The eyes of some owl species are 100 times more sensitive in low light than yours. This is how they see. The only visual limitation for owls is their farsightedness. This is partly compensated by sensitive bristles around their beaks, giving them another way to perceive objects. Parrots' visual acuity is comparable to that of humans. They can notice an eagle soaring high above the clouds and flying off into the distance. Their retinas contain specialized cones that can capture ultraviolet light. Each of these cones contains a drop of colored oil, which acts as both a microlens and a light filter, 
enhancing the bird's ability to distinguish colors. Therefore, parrots perceive the same shades as humans, but with increased brightness and a clearer distinction between similar colors, something like this. Parrots' eyes, located on the sides of their heads, offer a nearly 300-degree field of view. Such vision helps them spot predators long before they attack. What else helps parrots with this? The frame rate on a television screen is 60 to 100 frames per second, with only high-end models exceeding that rate. But a parrot's eye can capture more than 150 frames per second. No wonder they notice even small movements and changes in their environment, enabling them to fly away in time if threatened. However, parrots do have some limitations. Their depth perception and ability to move their eyeballs are inferior to humans. For instance, humans can rotate their eyes about 50 degrees horizontally, whereas parrots can only manage about 20 degrees. However, their visual acuity is two to eight times higher than that of some mammals. Have you ever tried sneaking up on a pigeon? It's quite difficult, unless it's a city pigeon already accustomed to people. They're constantly vigilant and well aware of their surroundings, essential for their survival. Pigeons always stay alert, and their excellent monocular vision with eyes on either side of their heads helps them avoid danger. These birds have to constantly refocus when looking at objects on the ground. Nonetheless, they possess superior optical characteristics. They see 135 degrees vertically and 340 degrees horizontally and can also distinguish ultraviolet light. It's no surprise that clothes reflecting ultraviolet rays scare and annoy them. Something like this. They can also spot objects at much greater distances than humans. Interestingly, it's not due to the vision sharpness, but because they can maintain vigilance for extended periods. This trait, among others, led the U.S. Coast Guard to employ pigeons in search and rescue operations at the end of the 20th century. The birds were trained to recognize red, yellow, and orange objects, colors typically used for life jackets and other emergency rescue equipment. Upon spotting such objects, the birds would peck a switch, turning on a light. Interestingly, they retained alertness throughout even three-hour missions. Pigeons' ability to distinguish five color channels compared to the three typically perceived by humans aids them in this task. And what about their night vision? It's better than yours. But it depends on the brightness of the moon and other surrounding light sources. Nonetheless, they are diurnal birds and only move at night in extreme necessity. Imagine seeing eight times better than you do right now. That's how hawks see the world. This remarkable vision is common to various hawk species. They have incredibly sharp vision due to the high density of photoreceptors in their eyes. This enables them to detect even the slightest movements from great distances. This sense makes them excellent hunters, capable of spotting prey from afar with remarkable precision. Most hawks can see clearly at distances of 30 meters, 100 feet, a range within which red-tailed hawks, for instance, can spot mice and other small creatures. They possess a 280-degree field of vision and a 40-degree binocular overlap. This means hawks can focus on a single object with both eyes, like humans, ensuring a clear image for highly accurate attacks. Moreover, hawks have an exceptional depth perception. These experienced hunters rely heavily on their vision for survival and success in the wild. They perceive a broader range of colors than humans, and can detect details invisible to us thanks to their ability to see ultraviolet light. Now, let's take a look at the world through their eyes. Their vision is complemented by sharp hearing. They pick up even the faintest sounds made by potential prey, such as young birds nesting in trees or small rodents rustling in leaves, long before a regular human would notice their presence. 
The combination of excellent vision and keen hearing has made hawks some of the most successful hunters in nature. There is a joke that this bird's eye is bigger than its brain. Have you already visualized this picture? This is about the ostrich. Yes, yes, the largest representative of the bird class. For example, the African ostrich reaches 2.75 meters, 9 feet in height, and weighs up to 156.8 kilograms, 346 pounds. So maybe there is some truth to the joke? The brain in ostriches is about 58 millimeters, 2.2 inches long, and 42 millimeters, 1.6 inches wide. It weighs up to 42 grams, 1.5 ounces. The ostrich's eye is round and the largest among all land vertebrates, 50 millimeters, 1.7 inches. Yes, yes, it is even bigger than in elephants. At the same time, according to various reports, it weighs up to 60 grams, 2.1 ounces. So, in weight, it really outweighs the brain. The ostrich needs its impressively sized eyes to find food and spot predators. For example, ostriches can see a moving object like a jackal or hyena at a distance of 3 kilometers, 1.9 miles during the day, and 50 meters, 164 feet at night. See through the eyes of an ostrich. Impressive, don't you think? These birds also have a wider field of vision than humans. Each eye can see about 150 to 170 degrees, and the right and left fields overlap by 20 to 30 percent, which means our character can see 300 degrees. Now, let's come down to Earth from the clouds and see the world through the eyes of reptiles. There are over 3,600 known species of snakes, and each species has its own hunting style, which largely determines their vision. Researchers have found that daytime hunting snakes have lenses in their eyes blocking ultraviolet light, which allows them to see clearly in bright conditions, something like what you see on your screen right now. On the other hand, nocturnal snakes have lenses that allow more ultraviolet light, enhancing their night vision. While there's much less ultraviolet light after sunset, it doesn't disappear entirely. These reptiles don't have eyelids. Instead, they have transparent scales covering their eyes, protecting them from dirt and debris. These scales are shed along with the rest of their skin during molting. Have you noticed how quick snakes are? Their lenses are more convex than ours, allowing for sharper focus and quicker reactions to objects. Many believe that snakes don't see colors. In reality, the retinas of some species contain rods and cones, which help distinguish light and color. The majority of their receptors are rods, sensitive to light and movement, but not to color. However, as we've already mentioned, they also have cones. But unlike us, they perceive two colors, not three. Indeed, snakes see the world differently than we do. In fact, they can see so much more. Species such as vipers, pythons, and boas possess special organs, pits between their nostrils and eyes that detect infrared radiation. Therefore, they have two types of vision movement-oriented daytime vision and thermal nighttime vision. So imagine, even in complete darkness, snakes can see the thermal outline of a mouse or other small prey, making them exceptional nocturnal hunters. The leopard gecko, or spotted leopard eublophar, is a unique species of lizard. They are common in the desert areas of India, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Nepal, and Iran. They are also popular as pets, admired for their yellow and black spots. But have you ever wondered how they see us through their eyes? Leopard geckos neither perceive ultraviolet nor infrared light. While they have excellent peripheral vision, they are nearsighted and struggle to focus on distant objects. 
yet they are highly sensitive to moving objects. Take a look at how they see. Overall, these lizards have good vision and see the world in colors and details. As nocturnal creatures, their eyes contain more rods than cones, enhancing their ability to see well in low light. Some estimates suggest they see their surroundings 350 times better at night than we do. During the day, their vision is almost as good as that of humans. Leopard geckos also possess trichromatic vision, meaning they have three types of cones in their eyes, sensitive to blue, green, and red colors. However, they perceive blue and green colors much better than red shades. They can distinguish colors even in dim light. Scientists conducted an experiment where geckos were fed with colored tweezers under moonlight. It turned out that the animals easily distinguished blue from green, but not orange from red. Leopard geckos are primarily active at dawn and dusk, when their environment is predominantly purple and blue. This allows them to see their surroundings more clearly. Let's now explore our next creature who sees well both day and night. Submerged underwater, it leaves only its eyes and nostrils above the surface. Interestingly, it has a third transparent eyelid that protects the eyes underwater. This creature's eyes are uniquely positioned. If you look at them from the front, it seems like the animal is looking directly at you. From the side, it seems to look sideways. Such positioning gives them the advantage of very good peripheral vision. You've probably guessed that we are talking about a crocodile. Their eyes are about the same size as ours, 24 millimeters, 0.9 inches in width. Unlike you, however, crocodiles can see at night. In daylight, their pupils narrow to thin slits, while at night, they can fully dilate to help them see better. Although they don't see very clearly at night, they can distinguish the outlines of fish, deer, crustaceans, zebras, or other prey animals, thanks to tiny mirror-like receptors at the back of their eyes, improving their night vision. They don't need to worry about other predators, but they are vigilant about rival crocodiles in their territory. This is how they see. Additionally, crocodiles see underwater thanks to the very same mirror-like receptors. What's more, they see color underwater just like they do on land. Their most remarkable feature is the ability to retract their eyeballs into the sockets to protect them during a fight. Crocodiles don't need to move their eyes when scanning the horizon because, as you remember, they have excellent peripheral vision. So, if you're reaching for a ball in the water and a crocodile is looking the other way, chances are it still sees you. Would you like to see another reptile that has survived since the time of the dinosaurs? Meet the Tuatara, Sphenodon punctatus, or Gutoria a species native to New Zealand. This ancient creature has lived through a significant global temperature drop, glaciation, mountain formation, and tremendous changes in flora and fauna. Today, the Tuatara is the only surviving member of the Sphenodontia order. It looks like a miniature dragon and can live for 100 years. Its distinctive feature is a third eye. This unpaired eye is much smaller than the paired ones and is only visible in young specimens. In adults, it's covered with a thin layer of scales. The animal's skull often has a special opening to accommodate the third eye. Now imagine seeing the world with three eyes. What a colorful perspective and view would open up. But let's dispel this notion. This third eye is a light-sensitive organ that doesn't perceive images. It's also called the parietal eye. It has a retina, nerve, and a lens-like structure, but lacks an iris, eyelids, and eye muscles. It might once have been a fully functioning organ. Currently, it's believed to play a role in thermoregulation and establishing circadian rhythms, the biological clock. 
But what about the Tuatera's other two eyes? They're just as remarkable, possessing advanced night vision and the ability to focus independently of each other. They contain an additional layer of Tapetum lucidum, a special layer in the vascular eye coating of vertebrates. It reflects light back onto the retina, so the Tuatera's eyes glow and see better in the dark. Observe the difference. Additionally, each eye is equipped with a nictitating membrane, a third eyelid. And now we finally reach a remarkable reptile that can spot a tiny fly 10 meters, 33 feet away. Until recently, it was believed that its eyes moved completely independently of each other, creating two different perspectives of the world. However, Israeli researchers have recently discovered that this lizard's eye movements are in fact coordinated. We're talking about the chameleon. Of course, it's known for its color-changing camouflage, but its extraordinary eyes are no less remarkable. They can track two separate targets simultaneously, one with each eye. Alternatively, one eye can follow a target while the other surveys the surroundings. During experiments using video games, scientists placed chameleons in front of a screen showing an insect moving from side to side. The animals reacted by shooting their tongues at this virtual meal. In another game, they showed one prey in the center of the screen, visible to both eyes of the lizard. Then the image split into two insects flying to opposite sides of the screen. The chameleon's eyes tracked both targets one per eye until one was chosen. Notice that while one eye tracks the prey, the other tracks its own target, but at some point converges to the first to focus on one target. This means that one of them is a tracking eye, while the other one is a converging eye. From this, we can infer that the chameleon's brain controls each eye independently, but there's also a higher level of control coordinating both eyes. Thus, each eye kind of knows precisely what the other one is seeing, something like what you see in this image. Additionally, the chameleon's eyes protrude on either side of its head, providing the lizard with a panoramic view, a remarkable optical tool created by nature itself. So we move on to those who can distinguish ultraviolet wavelengths, insects. Our character has huge spherical eyes with enhanced color vision. Meet the dragonfly. To give you an idea of their vision, let's remind you that we humans have tricolor or so-called trichromatic vision. We see colors as a combination of red, blue, and green. But dragonflies are more exciting. Depending on the species, they have four to five types of opsins i.e. much more than humans. Yes, the dragonfly world is much more colorful than ours, but even more interesting is that their DNA contains no less than 11, and in some species, as many as 30 genes of different visual opsins. In other words, in the process of evolution, the color vision has varied to the most incredible extent and some of the possibilities of such genetic diversity they use even now. Japanese biologist Ryo Futahashi in Japan also found that dragonflies use different opsins at different ages. For example, larvae of some species that hatch in sand usually lack opsins that perceive the color blue. Other studies have shown that dragonflies can see ultraviolet light, that is, dragonflies distinguish colors better than humans, which means they could see flowers like this. But in addition to being excellent at distinguishing colors, dragonflies are also great at seeing targets quickly. Their vision is so fast that they can decide in less than five hundredths of a second whether a flying object is likely to be prey. Now imagine flipping through a notebook with a drawing of a flying bird. If we do it quickly, we'll actually see a mini video and won't notice the pages turning. But to the dragonfly, thanks to its supervision, the process will seem much slower 
and it will see exactly the turning of the pages. Where we see 60 images per second, it sees about 200, which means it can see objects that we simply can't see. Even the dragonfly's movements are so fast that we would only be able to see them in detail if we filmed them with a camera that slows them down 80 times. With their impressive 360-degree visual field and other abilities, it's no surprise that these creatures have been around for over 300 million years. That's right, they predate the dinosaurs. Now, let's dive into aquatic life. More specifically, mantis shrimp has some of the most complex eyes in the animal kingdom. Mantis shrimp has up to 16 types of light-sensitive cones, compared to three in humans, and they can see ultraviolet, visible, and polarized light. Polarized light is a light in which all light waves point in the same direction. Usually, light waves travel in all directions, but when light is polarized, the waves are filtered and travel in only one direction. It can happen naturally such as when light reflects off water or glass or with special filters. Polarized light is often used in sunglasses to reduce glare. That's how objects look through such glasses. As you can see, the lack of glare makes the environment appear more contrasting. Mantis shrimp are the only known animals that can see light with circular polarization which means that the direction of the electric and magnetic fields changes circumferentially as the wave propagates. Now let's take a closer look at their amazing organs of vision. The eyes of mantis shrimp consist of tens of thousands of omatidia, meaning elements of facet eyes, as in insects. The very structure of the eye of the mantis crayfish is very unusual. The eye is divided into three sections with two hemispheres, separated by a narrow linear middle band. Each hemisphere contains rows of omatidia with different functions like color detection, polarization, and motion. And thanks to these same two hemispheres, the mantis shrimp can perceive depth with one eye. They have six rows of modified omatidia in the center of the eye the one above mentioned middle band. That's where the real magic happens. The first four rows detect ordinary and ultraviolet light visible to human eyes. The omatidia of the last two rows contain tiny hairs, which some scientists believe are responsible for polarized vision. But can the mantis crayfish distinguish more colors than humans? A team of scientists led by Australian neuroscientist Justin Marshall experimented. They trained test subjects of the species Haptosquilla trispinosa to recognize one of 10 specific wavelengths between 400 and 650 nanometers, showing them two colors and rewarding them with frozen shrimp or mussels when they chose the right one. Eventually, the mantis shrimp could distinguish other colors, 50 to 100 nanometers, up or down the spectrum. But when the difference was reduced to 12 to 25 nanometers, the crayfish could no longer distinguish them. In contrast, the human eye distinguishes wavelengths at 1 to 5 nanometers. Each type of photoreceptor seems to pick up a particular color, detecting it less sensitively than the human eye. Thus, the transitions between colors are not as smooth for them as for us. Now, without leaving the water, let's look into the largest eyes on the planet. They are at least 25 centimeters, 10 inches in diameter. That's the size of a soccer ball. Who owns such huge eyes? Could it be the largest fish eyes? Nope. The record holder here is a swordfish with 9 centimeter, 3.5 inch eyes. Could we be talking about the largest animal that ever lived, the blue whale? No, his eyes are only 11 centimeters, 4.3 inches. They'd fit into our character's pupils. Let's not tease you anymore. We're talking about a giant squid. So why are its eyes so big? 
Dan Eric Nielsen and Eric Warrant from Lund University in Sweden believe that the squid has developed its eyes to cope with some important tasks for the animal world, most likely to detect in time one of the largest predators in the world, the sperm whale. The squid's eyes are located on either side of its head, meaning it doesn't have the binocular vision needed to judge distances. It could be hypothesized that the big-eyed squid sees farther than the small-eyed squid. It would help find both prey and a mate. But Nielsen and Warren found that the eyes see farther if they grow larger, only until the pupil exceeds 2.5 centimeters, one inch. When the pupil grows to 3.5 centimeters, 1.4 inches, and the eye grows to 9 centimeters, 3.5 inches, it makes no sense to grow larger. A larger size will not make the vision better. That's why this is the maximum eye size of a fish, although the head of a swordfish could accommodate larger vision organs. A giant squid weighs about the same as a swordfish, but its eye is about three times larger. Why? Let's break it down. The large pupil allows the eye to collect every photon of light in the extraordinarily deep and dark waters where the squid lives. And huge eyes have advantages over just big eyes. For example, they are much better at detecting large objects emitting their own light at depths of more than 500 meters, 1,640 feet. That includes the already mentioned enemy of giant squid, the sperm whale. Wait a minute, but sperm whales don't glow, you might argue. And you'd be right, that's how it is. But they scare away tiny animals like jellyfish and crustaceans that flash in response. These flickering outlines would be too dim for most animals, but not for the giant squid. To him, it looks something like this. Its eyes can pick up this light from 120 meters, 394 feet away, and scan the water looking for these flashes. They're also great at spotting details. And our next characters can avoid predators and find dark corners to hide in, even though they don't have eyes. How do they manage without them? And why did they appear on our list? The fact is, it's possible to see without conventional sight, but with the whole surface of your body. In this case, the whole body is one solid eye. At least, that's how sea urchins called purple Strongylocentrotus sea, according to scientists' assumptions. They owe their name to the purple hue in their body coloration. These urchins live along the eastern coast of the Pacific Ocean, stretching from Ensenada, Mexico to British Columbia, Canada. They move with needles that act like stilts and specific tube feet. In general, Strongylocentrotus has a sedentary lifestyle. They leisurely explore the bottom in search of food. Their favorite treat is the giant brown algae, Macrocystis pyrifera. So how can their bodies see? The thing is, they have light-sensitive molecules, mostly in their legs and in tiny stalk-like appendages located between the spines. Altogether, they function like a retina. That's it. The sea urchins change the angle and direction of vision by retracting their feet. But the spines themselves play a role in all this. Scientists have suggested that they may help hedgehogs distinguish relatively fine details by shielding light from different angles. In any case, purple Strongylocentrotus see better than hedgehogs Echinometra lacunter and Echinometra viridis, which have fewer spines. Well, and of course, scientists conducted some interesting experiments to prove this. Sonke Johnson, a marine biologist at Duke University in North Carolina, together with colleagues, placed 39 purple Strongylocentrotus on a lighted area with a width of 1.2 meters, 4 feet, and hung a black disc off the wall. And then the most intriguing thing happened. When the disc was almost 6 centimeters, 2.5 inches wide, the urchins showed no interest in it. But when its width reached about 9 centimeters, 3.5 inches, it caused a violent reaction. 
two-thirds of the subjects rushed towards it, and the remaining third away from it. In other words, it was probably considered a shelter by some and a predator by others. Of course, when we say rushing, we should take into account the speed of these guys. Watching them move is like watching paint dry. Animals see and perceive this world very differently from humans. Their ultraviolet vision, infrared sensitivity, microscopic vision, and echolocation abilities make them sensitive to signals we cannot perceive. This helps animals detect prey and avoid becoming one themselves. It also allows them to perceive the world in their own way and adapt to various conditions. I bet now you can't look at the world around you with the same eyes.